Good morning. Happy Friday. Welcome to Stock Market Today for March 5th, 2021. This is Dan Russo, the Chief Market Strategist at Shaken Analytics. Find me on Twitter. I'm at Dan Russo underscore CMT. Stock Market Today brought to you today and every day by Chaken Analytics. Head over to ChakenAnalytics.com forward slash today. Sign up for an email where I get a lot of the content for this show. We also give you ideas to consider. It hits your inbox every trading day before the market opens. So U.S. equities finished lower on Thursday and the NASDAQ composite is now down on the year. Growth and momentum underperformed as rates moved higher on the day. Energy was the biggest gainer and defensive sectors also led. Technology and materials uh, underperformed. Treasury sold off with the curve steepening. The dollar was stronger on the major crosses. Gold finished down 90 basis points. Crude oil settled up 4.2%. Uh, remember, there was an OPEC meeting yesterday. As we get to the desk this morning, S&P futures are up 30 basis points after Asian markets were mostly lower overnight. European markets are trading weaker and treasuries are, let's call them unchanged here this morning. Dollar is extending its strength on the major crosses. Dollar is up over 1% on the week. Gold is down 30 basis points. WTI crude is up 2.5% after rallying more than 4% yesterday. And on tap at 8.30 this morning, non-farm payrolls will be in focus. According to fact set estimates call for an increase of 175,000 jobs in February. That's the backdrop from markets that are now at an inflection point. So it's kind of interesting that we're at an inflection point and we're going to get a key data point for the economy today. Um, the rationale behind calling this an inflection point is quite simple. SPY is now uh, in the support zone between 370 and 380. Uh, that is the range in the near term that we have been highlighting. It's in play now. Below that, 340. The Qs, 300 is now key. We took out near-term support on the Qs. We're watching that 300 level closely. Uh, I think that that is the key marker here in the near term now, uh, above which we can say the structure of the uptrend is intact, but wavering, as we started to say yesterday, uh, but still intact. We break 300. We have to start thinking about a different roadmap, at least as it relates to the Qs. Now, part of that roadmap has been playing out, quite frankly, as the cyclical value rotation reopening, call them what you want, ideas have been working in the face of weakness in the growth theme especially mega cap and especially high multiple growth. So the roadmap in fairness has been shifting, uh, but 300 I think is the key level here for Qs. We tested it yesterday and then rebounded uh, from it to close at 304.10 on the day. IWM still a little bit above near-term support in the 200 to 210 range, closing at 213 yesterday. And then below that 160, 170 becomes key. I still see upside potential to 413 for SPY. Um, is the trend wavering here in the near term? Yes. Is it broken in the near term? No. All right. I think that's an important distinction to make. We are at an inflection point. Uh, we're going to get a key data point today on the economy with non-farm payrolls at 830. Um, so I think at this point, you kind of sit back, see how it plays out. The market will dictate direction. The market will tell you which roadmap to pull out of the glove box. Uh, the trend is now wavering, but not broken is my view here. If you had to give me, if, if you had to pin me down on a one sentence view of the overall equity market here in the U.S., I would say the uptrend is wavering, but not broken. Let's touch on our market in a minute now. Uh, Powell fails to soothe growth stock investors as Q's test uh, key 300 level. Rates continue to rise, adding to the growth stock pain trade. Semiconductors breaking down on a relative basis. We're asking the question. We'll take a look at that a little bit later on uh, in the show. High beta remains stretched versus low volatility. And futures are pointing to a higher open today with the jobs report on deck. Let's take a look at the major indices now from a power bar perspective. Dow slips negative. Six bulls to seven bears after losing a percent. Uh, S&P 500 down 1.23%, 115 to 65 bulls to bears there. The NASDAQ down 1.64%, 12 to 25 bulls to bears. So greater than two to one uh, on the bearish to bullish side of the coin now for that ratio on the NASDAQ. Small caps, your big underperformer on the day down 2.7%, still a solid ratio. Bonds down tick, sending yields higher. Energy, once again, uh, your best sector on the day, up 2.4%. Seven bulls, zero bears in the energy complex. According to the Chaikin Power Bar, small cap stocks and large cap stocks are bullish. Major indexes across the board are mixed. Let's take a look at our stock of the day now. Um, 
Berry Global Group, ticker symbol B-E-R-Y, closed at 57.83, down 76 basis points yesterday. So we can call it an outperformer. Has a bullish shake in power gauge rating. The trend is strong and part of a strong industry group within the containers and packaging area of the market. Trading above the rising long-term trend line, which, what jumped out at me on this stock was right here. The spike in relative strength in the face of equity market weakness over the past couple of weeks uh, is interesting to me. I always find it helpful to search out the areas of the market that have held up the best when the broader averages get volatile. I think that that oftentimes can be a great starting point for new ideas. Taking a look at the overbought, oversold indicator here, rounding out of an oversold condition with bullish money flows. We have a bullish fund outperforming with the intensity of outperformance picking up of late. Uh, moving from oversold with bullish money flow as it consolidates above support and above the rising long-term trend line. That's an interesting setup to me. Uh, definitely warrants uh, some, some attention here uh, for investors who uh, might be looking for new ideas. Taking a look at our sector tracker now, the movement of the major sectors over the last five days. Energy at the top of the list. Uh, and I think that following price having a process and focusing on relative strength um, really shine here because energy has been a disaster for, it was a disaster for a long time. Uh, we were bearish on it. There was probably a two year stretch where I just didn't have anything good to say about energy. Uh, and, but that changed in December and rather than remaining dogmatic, rather than, you know, pointing to things like, well, president Biden is for clean tech and we had a blue wave in, in Congress, and clearly this is uh, bad for traditional energy. Um, no, we followed price, we followed relative strength, and got on board. Uh, I think that uh, dogma is probably one of the worst traits for an investor to have. Uh, when the facts change, changing your mind often makes the most sense, and that's what's happened here, uh, and energy has worked higher. Comms and financials also higher over the past five days of trading industrials, materials, utilities, and staples in the middle of the pack, healthcare, tech, discretionary, and REITs at the bottom of the list over the past five days of trading. Uh, obviously, tech and discretionary are in focus here. Tech is, you know, hardware, semiconductor, software, a lot of high voltable names in there uh, getting hit. The discretionary, I think, is really a, a play on the same theme in that Amazon and Tesla are now the largest weights within that sector. Hitting our industry in focus now, Dow Jones REIT services past six months um, has outperformed the S&P by 50 basis points. Power bar ratio, negative, 22 to 8, uh, bears to bulls there. Currently ranked number 18 of 21 subsectors, though it has moved up two slots over the past week. So QTS Realty is very bearish. Realty Income Corp is very bearish. And Duke Realty, D-R-E, is very bearish. Uh, the fund itself, I mean, Little near term outperformance, but I mean, largely, largely a, a nothing uh, over the past year of trading. Um, perhaps maybe some of the near term outperformance are investors rotating out of treasuries, low yielding treasuries that have come under pressure. Uh, and maybe they're attracted to the dividend yields on some REITs. Uh, I don't know. I haven't dug that far into it. Um, realistically, the trend here is flat, right? I mean, it's, it's pretty simple. You know, here's a year ago, here's today. I mean, the, textbook definition of a, of do not of a nothing burger uh just flat over the past year of trading uh near term outperformance okay maybe something to pay attention to especially if should it persist while equities remain weak that'd be a defensive message something we'd want to pay attention to uh but right now it's early days we're going to watch it uh, trend is flat Let's take a look at what's trending now. Our yesterday's gainers and losers are movers and shakers in the S&P 500. And if you focus on the left-hand side of this screen, I think the message is pretty clear as it relates to what I was saying earlier about energy. Uh, so yesterday, OPEC meeting as it relates to production levels, uh, takeaway was bullish for oil, bullish for, this, for these energy stocks. Clearly, Diamondback Energy, FANG up 9% on the day, EOG up 6.6%. Nothing company specific here. I think it's just kind of a, a, a thematic trade in energy, oil, and then you had an OPEC kicker yesterday. Marathon up 6.3%. Uh, Hess. I'm going to call it Amarada Hess. Hess Corp, 466 to the good. And Oxy, Oxy Petroleum, 4.33% uh, uh, to the upside yesterday. Taking a look at the loser side of the board, Tyler Tech, 
Tyler is a uh, growth stock, certainly. Uh, and they announced the convertible offering yesterday to take 13.5% out of the stock. Western Digital, WDC, down 8.9%. Enphase, ENPH, uh, down 7% on the day. Freeport, Mac Moran, um, no news, down 6.5%. MOS, Mosaic, part of that ag theme, although we did get some USDA sales data out yesterday. Mosaic, down 6% on the day. Uh, I will note uh, Western Digital did catch an upgrade. WDC uh, caught an upgrade at Goldman Sachs here today. Let's dive into the charts now. Uh, taking a look at what's going on here uh, on the growth versus value trade. Sorry about that. On the growth versus value trade, IUSG versus IUSV. Uh, breaking down below the 200 day moving average below near term support all all along through the consolidation we were getting a series of lower highs on the part of the RSI right so from a momentum standpoint we can see that momentum has been waning uh, and we're now pushed into an oversold position uh, similar dynamic at play, although not a breakdown yet on the QQQ uh, versus spy ratio so just something to be mindful of. Uh, here as we're watching, as I said earlier, Q's at an inflection point. There's no doubt about it. Um, next couple of days are going to be important uh, for that uh, QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF. But growth, ver growth versus value after a solid um, first kind of eight months of 2020 peaked out September 2nd. Uh, went into a consolidation and is now breaking down from that consolidation below the 200-day moving average. Notice, too, that the 200-day moving average has gone from rising to flat. Uh, so clearly, the trend has changed here. The question is, what happens on rebounds? Does a rebound just kind of take us up to the breakdown level and fail? That would certainly be a change of character for this ratio and would tell you that, yes, the growth over value trade is likely over. So it's something that uh, we want to be watching closely in the days and weeks ahead. Taking a look at semis on a relative basis, uh, breaking near-term support, uh, still above the 200-day moving average. Now, remember, my big kind of gripe with the semi relative to spy ratio is that for a long time, it was just really extended from the 200 day, you know, over 20% above the 200 day moving average on the ratio here. Uh, we're down to less than 10% above uh, on the ratio. So I think that's important. Um, taking a look at the bigger picture trend still up near term breakdown. No two ways about it. That is what's happening. RSI, after failing to become overbought on the most recent spike higher, which also left a negative divergence. Notice how we have the um, higher high here for the ratio, but the lower high on the RSI. And RSI is now pushing on a string at the bottom end of bullish ranges uh, for this ratio. So something um, that we're going to be wanting, watching closely. Remember, uh, we pay close attention to semiconductors as a read on the broader market, uh, especially kind of the momentum of this ratio. When semis uh, are, are, are outperforming, that's generally positive. But when momentum starts to waver in this ratio, as it has been for pretty much this year, uh, you, it, it could lead to some choppy trading for the overall equity market, certainly for the for the tech space. And, and we, we've seen that play out uh, here over the past few weeks. So let's keep uh, this ratio front and center. Uh, if you are bullish, right, ideally what we want to see is the Qs hold 300 and we want to see this ratio get back in gear. That would be a bullish development uh, for investors here. And then finally, treasuries. Um, we highlighted this support zone yesterday, uh, last Friday. And realistically, we're holding it still, right? Notwithstanding the sell-off in rates yesterday on the back of Powell speaking, uh, we're still holding this support zone. So I think the mosaic is clear here. Uh, I think you want to see Qs hold 300 while this bounces. So IEF holding kind of 112 to 114 while the Qs hold 300. Um, that'd be an important development uh, in the marketplace. Should, those, should these levels break, uh, we have a new dynamic at play in the market. I think today and the next couple of days are going to be real important, especially watching this, uh, watching rates here as well, right? Rates have backed up uh, to 1.5 on the 10-year. So that's going to wrap us up for today. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Head over to chickenanalytics.com forward slash test drive to take us for a spin. I'll talk to you Monday.
Hey, Grayson Rhodes here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment, and if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.